So here is the uh, uh, origins of Hinduism and Buddhism in South Carolina at standard 6-1.4 where we have to explain the origins, fundamental beliefs, and spread of Eastern religions. Um, it includes Hinduism, um, Buddhism, Judaism, Confucianism, and Taoism. So for the Eastern religions, we're asked to do several things. First of all, we have to look at the origins. Where did the religion begin? Who was the founder? And how did it begin? Then we look at the fundamental beliefs. What are some of the main beliefs of the religion? Are there any holy books or texts? Is there a place of worship? And then diffusion. How did the re uh, religion spread? It started in one place and it spread to other parts of the world. How did it do that? Well, first, today we're going to look at Hinduism. It originated with sacred writings called the Vedas. It started in India. It was brought there by the Aryans. Um, and the original parts of Hinduism were written in Sanskrit in 1500 BC. Hinduism began before 1500 BC, but it was not written down until 1500 BC. The founder of Hinduism is unknown. Um, since Hinduism began before there was a written language, um, things were passed along orally. Uh, and no one kept track of who the founder was, if there was one. So at this point, their founder is unknown. There are several fundamental beliefs in Hinduism. Um, we'll start with Brahman. Uh, Buddhists believe, or Hindus believe, that there is a spiritual power that is a source of all existence, is present in everything and every place. They believe in reincarnation. They believe that they go through a cycle of life, death, um, and then they're born again. Um, and their soul repeats this until the time they can reach nirvana. So what letter C is what Hindus strive to get. They try to reach uh, nirvana. It's a place of perfect peace and happiness. And this is the goal of each and every Hindu. Um, one of the ways to get there is through Dharma. This is to follow your duty in life. So my duty in life is to be um, an excellent teacher, an excellent parent, and an excellent husband. And those are my obligations. And if I was a Hindu, I would be obligated to follow that Dharma and be the best I can be at being a teacher and a husband and a parent. Karma is what I get in return for being excellent, or in other words, if I wasn't excellent. So their belief in karma is that my life's actions directly affect my quality of life. If I have bad karma, um, I might be reincarnated at a lower caste level. If I have good karma, I might be reincarnated at a higher caste level. And then we look at moksha. Hindus believe this is their salvation. Hindus want to reach moksha where their soul becomes one with Brahman. At this point, reincarnation ends and they are what they consider being having salvation. They can reach moksha through doing good works, basically being a good person and helping out others through knowledge and being devoted to being a Hindu. The holy books of Hindus, uh, they have three of them. Uh, first are the Vedas, which is um, a set of books that contain sacred poems and hymns. You have the Upanishads, which is a text uh, studied by students and teachers. They have um, the Bhagavad Gita which is a part of the epic, the Marabharata, which teaches Hindus what they must do to reach that salvation and become one with Brahman. And Hindus are polytheistic. They believe in several different gods, many different gods. Hinduism is the world's largest polytheistic religion with approximately 15 million followers. And it's the world's oldest known polytheistic religion. So how has Hinduism spread? It hasn't spread a lot. It's mainly found on the subcontinent of India. It's found in other parts of Southeast Asia, like Nepal. It is spread through business. Um, it's spread through trade, education, the teaching of Hindu priests. But traditional Hindus believe that you must be born to Hindu parents to be a Hindu. So let's look at the next religion, which is Buddhism. It also originated in India. Um, and it includes some of the beliefs of Hinduism. And on the bottom right, you'll see this um, most recognizable symbol of Buddhism, which is a picture of Buddha. The founder was Siddhartha Gautama. He, is a, he was a rich Hindu prince. Um, so being a rich Hindu prince, he never experienced sickness, never experienced death, was well taken care of. Early in his life, um, the story goes that he was you know, outside 
of his house and he saw a dying man, a sick person in a dead body. And he thought to himself that there's got to be a better way in life. Um, so he gives up all his wealth. Um, he um, goes to meditate and eventually he becomes enlightened. Once he being enlightened, he becomes known as the Buddha. Buddhists believe in the four noble truths. They believe that our lives is full of pain and suffering. They believe the reason we suffer is because we have our selfish desires. We want the newest Xbox. We want the newest car. We want the biggest house. We want the nicest clothes. And those are selfish desires. And when we can't get those things, we suffer. Uh, Buddhists believe that we should search for nirvana, which is being free of these selfish desires. And the way to reach nirvana is to follow the Eightfold Path um, to get to nirvana. The Eightfold Path, you'll see a diagram of that on the bottom right. You'll also see a wheel on the, on the um, or sorry, the bottom left has the diagram. The, the right hand side has a wheel with eight spokes, which means the Eightfold Path. But the Eightfold Path really has three parts. First of all, it says that we should not indulge in too much luxury and pleasure. We shouldn't have to have the greatest house, uh, the greatest jewelry, the most expensive clothes, um, the biggest car. But in number two, they also, Buddhists believe that we should not desire, deny ourselves worldly desires. We should have a car to get to work. We should have clothes to wear. We should have a decent house to live in. So what they believe in number three is that we should take a middle or balanced course in our behavior or our lives. Have a decent car, decent clothes, um, you know, uh, a decent house. But you don't need the greatest house, but you shouldn't live in the poorest house. You should strive to find something middle or balanced in life. Buddhists are, don't really practice monotheism or polytheism. They do not worship the Buddha. They see the Buddha as more of a teacher. So it's really a philosophy or a way to live your life. So how is Buddhism spread? It is mainly found in Southeast Asia. You find uh, Buddhists mainly in China, Korea, Japan, um, other parts of Southeast Asia. In ancient India, it was a part in important part of the Ashoka and Gupta empires. We studied the Gupta empire before the Gupta dynasty. That's where a lot of great achievements came from. And Buddhists do try to convert others through Buddhist monks. So hope you've uh, learned something here about Hinduism and Buddhism.